This program is proudly brought to you by the Peel Dance Bar, Corner of Peel and Wellington Streets, Collingwood. This is Blah 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 on Bent TV. My name's Michelle and tonight we're coming from The Peel, live from The Peel. Um, we've got a very interesting show tonight. It's called Lesbian Health Such a Thing. We've got a very interesting lineup as well. We have Shelley, Hello. Lish, hey. Ruth who's from the Carlton Clinic, Ruth McNair, Sally Goldman who was the co-convener of Transgender Victoria and also does um, stuff on Joy Melbourne and also is working for the Transgender Working Party on Transgender Health Issues. Right, and these two lovebirds over here are Jane and Anna. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd just like to start tonight by talking briefly about do we think there is such a thing as lesbian health and is it different from women's health? Maybe you could start, Ruth, seeing as you've probably had quite a bit of experience in this issue. Yeah, well, I, I see lots of lesbians where I work and... <laughs> I think there is such a thing as lesbian health. I mean, there are lesbians, aren't there? But yeah, really, I mean, there are things that are different for lesbians. One of the major ones is probably finding a health practitioner that, uh, that you can understands. talk to. Yeah, and so, you know, finding someone you can talk to who understands where you're coming from, understands some of your specific issues. Mm, and can probably talk, talk about them and think about them in yeah. a bit more. Yeah, rather than way. just going, oh, you're a lesbian, oh, now what will I say? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we've all had experiences with pap smears that are quite heterosexist and homophobic and yep. I can probably reel off heaps of stories that friends have spoken about that really make you just think, Does it, is there, is there health professions, you know, is anyone aware yeah. of what we do or what we can get or what's happening within lesbian community? What do you think, Shelley? Well, I know um, I am a trained health professional as well, and I have been out on the scene for 22 years. <laughs> Sounds like a really long time. You've had a lot of experience. And I didn't start when I was four either in preschool. <laughs> My mother thinks I did. Mm. Um, You've done nursing and worked yeah, with... Yeah, exactly. There was no gender-specific training that I was given. Um, as a dyke working um, in clinical service provision, which is what we call just working at the coal fairs, um, really, once you're identified as a lesbian, I think Ruth has had this experience, mm. you tend to get every kind of person they consider to be deviant. Mm -hmm. um, and the reality is you haven't actually been trained or you don't have enough experience to sort of take that lead. What do you so mean, who, anyone who's considered deviant? Well, it, of course, you'd immediately attract anybody that identified themselves as a lesbian, somebody they might suspect as an injecting drug user, yeah. anybody with uh, gender identity issues, um, which would be poor old cells experience, yeah. I should imagine. Mm -hmm. um, even women with children that are lesbian identified rather than sort of immediately accessing them to the services that would normally be offered to somebody who is parenting, they're immediately sort of shoved off to this, uh, we'll send you to the bent person because they're yeah. likely to understand what's going on. Mm. So, and mental health issues often mm. that you're dealing with without ad yeah. um, adequate training. Yeah, which is something um, that I'm personally very interested in mm. um, and especially how lesbians deal with m mental health, health issues as well as depression and all that sort of thing. and. Um, often in my experience I've noticed that a lot of lesbians deal with that with alcohol abuse and drug abuse and how there seems to be so much lack of support for any, any health issue including mental health issue that it sort of all of a sudden gets dumped into this kind of you're just sick you should just mm. you know deal with your problems don't worry about counselling just somehow get over the fact that it's, it's actually quite a restrictive mm. sort of category to think about yeah well it's all about homophobia is the health risk not being a lesbian. Mm. You know? So we're dealing with this all the time and that's one of the results. You know? I'm pretty shocked that there's no training for 
for in, in yeah, the, and there still isn't. You're right. Oh, mm -hmm. I think that just we're just starting to embark. So I work with a lot of GPs, and we're just starting to to reconcile things like cross cultural training, mm -hmm. let alone yeah. any of the mm -hmm. other issues. So, yeah. which is absurd, really absurd. Mm -hmm. um, What's your experience, Sally? You must have had some kind of quite a lot of experience, I'd say, with dealing with gender issues and. Oh. health issues and ha have you found that the medical profession has been quite horrible or quite understanding or they c you can find the understanding ones but it's a long mm. hard dig to get some gold amongst the silt so to speak mm. I mean I know personally myself when trying to find a transgender let's say transgender sensitive GP mm. and a transgender knowledgeable GP mm. is, is, impos is difficult I fluked at once I've been mm. going to one suburban clinic for eight years went in there one day to, and just sort of to see someone different and it turned out this person had had 20 years experience wow. with transgender but unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, say I'd been seeing her for about 18 months she got sick herself and had to retire wow. and so there I was searching all over again and agreeing mm -hmm. with what Shelley said I mean there is still virtually nil training as I understand it for GPs on all areas of sex and sexuality let alone lesbian and transgender mm -hmm. lesbian health it's just it's it's zero mm. and so to find people who are knowledgeable they've basically learned through their own experiences Shelley yeah. has and probably Ruth has yeah. it's a it's a it's a really difficult thing to do and of course so how do you fluke that or how do you find that if you if you're hoping not to fluke coming yeah. across someone who can understand yeah. your problems mm. like how do you go, actually go about finding someone like that or combination of word of mouth mm. and the support groups I mean the support mm. groups like Seahorse Club of Victoria for transgender people uh, transgender liberation and care build up knowledge of people who are who are sensitive to the mm. issues who do have the knowledge and mm. okay you, you get to talk to them and either talk to the, the committee members of those clubs or the individuals themselves and that's mm. a great start mm. but mm. it's again it's you've got to dig for it it's not just like you can walk into your local clinic and talk about these yeah, issues exactly mm. that's how I think all of us have found out about lesbian doctors and yeah. GPs and stuff yeah. like yeah, I know yeah. that I've found out um, through friends who have had experience and done stuff like that. What do you guys reckon? Oh, I think um, you've got the adults who are having problems trying to get this whole thing sorted out. I mean, think about the kids. Yeah. Like the yeah. kids, are, you know, Still they're, they're, they're getting trained in, um, you know, safe sex and all this kind of thing. And, you know, it comes to anything to do with a lesbian or gay. And mm. what, what do you do? They're sitting there going, I have no idea. So I guess it's about training across the board, like sex mm. education in all... Like across the Sorry. board of in schools and unis and yeah. everything like that. There's no resources left for these organisations. Like you know, like you were saying, you know, you get thousands of women, you mm. know, lesbians, but mm. there's no facilities, there's no services. Like, and what services there are, they're so underfunded that you can't actually deal with, mm. you know, the problems that are there. Like you know, the high schools are still dealing with safe sex, hetero safe sex, and that's just condoms. Like, and that is so, you know. Directed I guess towards it's the male. It's just, you know. It's about not wanting to accept that kids have sex. Yeah. Let alone something that's not heterosexual. So mm. I guess. I don't find it really amusing, or not amusing and distressing. I guess it is, or, or, or just bizarre that um, we're not taught a broad range of sexual education. Mm. It doesn't really need to be particularly. Uh, sexual orientation specific because I would say heterosexuals are just as likely to engage in oral sex, mm -hmm. anal penetration, vaginal mm -hmm. penetration, um, the, yeah, the whole gamut of things and I, I really don't understand why people can't just accept it's part of their general education on how their bodies work and I think that's, that's what's happening in the dark scene and we've discussed it all earlier of course. We've been having <laughs> lots of fun <laughs> talking about, about coming out and being a young dyke and mm -hmm. it was quite interesting because we realised that it's quite a taboo subject to actually talk about sex within, amongst our friends, lesbian friends, and to say, well, I actually haven't ever done that, how do you do it? Or to, you know, it's sort of a bit of a taboo. image issue as well, yeah, I think. Yeah, a lot of yeah. dykes don't want to say, I don't actually know how to do this, or I've never done it. And yeah. it's all about, you know, we've never been actually taught, so how, how are we expected to know? But we've also not been encouraged to know our own bodies, like yeah. as women. And that's like, the real yeah, issue, We're I removed think. from it, you know, we aren't, you know, it's like... We don't actually have sex. We don't, you know, like we don't menstruate. Like we yeah. don't. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's all clean and clinical. Like, yeah. I take that further. A friend of mine, who I met through Lifeline counselling, she went on to do social work up in a northwestern Victorian rural area, and she was taking year nines on what 
I think most people would consider basic birds and quest que bees mm. questions. Mm. Had a really good approach. You said rather than ask the questions in front of people, let's put them in a hat, make them anonymous, then we'll draw them out and I'll yeah. answer them. And some of the questions were so basic, like, you know, sort of, yeah. do, you, do you have to put a condom on or something? Yeah. It was like, so if that's, you know, if, the, if we're having this trouble in the inner city with the so-called resources, what are the people in New Mildura's and Orbost's doing? It must be even worse. Oh, yeah, and, uh -huh. and definitely things like thinking about within, like, inner city, amongst our friends even, we have trouble discussing this kind of thing. But, you know, how would it be for a young gay or lesbian who's coming out in rural Victoria, as you said, like, to, to even think about something a bit more you know, full on, like, how do we do it or how do I do it safely if I want to do it? Well, exactly. And I live in a country town, about four hours from um, Melbourne when I'm home. My actual mm. job is working all over rural Victoria with GPs on drug and alcohol issues. And I can tell you, it's, it's really incredibly difficult. Most of those kids will end up in a regional city or in Melbourne, but mm. bereft of any form of support. Um, it's, yeah all sorts of things. Like, you, you, we've even got young lesbians who are ending up pregnant because of mm. sexual assault in country areas mm. who are terrified to go and consult a GP mm. in their own town to talk about sexual assault and its impact on them with their yeah. emerging sexuality. Mm. Yeah. So, and that's a very interesting thing that I've even had experience of personally is um, sort of talking about sexually transmitted diseases or pregnancies or sexual assault within the lesbian community. It's like we don't actually want to admit or acknowledge that that you know lesbians are prostitutes and lesbians do use drugs and lesbians do have sex with men and how are we going to negotiate that within understandings of sexual identity mm -hmm. and um, sort of how do we even start talking about that sort of thing when it's not even acknowledged amongst us yeah. and yeah. It's sort of we don't have any experience in that yeah, well, I think it just has to start with us. And we just have to open it up and just start talking amongst ourselves and doing this kind of thing. And I mean, we just found out so much just outside. Having a, <laughs> yeah, we did. We were sitting there kind of discussion. You know, we're just doing what we typically would do. We sit there and go, yeah, kind of, we know what we're doing. <laughs> and, and then everyone's talking, we're going, hey, you know. Yeah, we actually don't know what we're doing. We're doing. the older women around town. <laughs> and, it's, and it's to think about um, the way we don't know how our bodies work. Like talking to Shelley before was very interesting because I've actually got such a minuscule amount of information about my own body that it's kind of amazing that, you know, it's sort of not taught like that. But we've got to go to a break, so I might think of talking about this when we come back. This is Blah 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 on Bent TV on Channel 31. Okay. And we've got lots and lots and lots of interesting stuff to talk about when we finish doing this. See you soon. sponsor break. Today we're talking about lesbian health, is there such a thing? Um, and we've been talking for the last 15 minutes about <laughs> stuff and I really want to talk about safe sex now and um, the vagina, or should I say it some other way? It's a bit <laughs> hard to know. Um, firstly I'd like to start by asking everyone, has anyone ever used a dental dam? No. No. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Two out of Okay, six. so what does that say? What does that say about how... <laughs> that says actually, they're pretty easy. When we got together, I actually got it to, to, to go to the doctors and get a checkup because I had my checkup. So is that before yeah. you had sex? Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Before oh, let it touch really? Five o'clock at the yeah. Please don't get tested. <laughs> <laughs> Did that well, talk that's you about pretty rare thing, I think. It was really rare, and I really 
enjoyed it because it's so easy to meet women and it's just all on and right, not like they don't care and right, oh, whatever. And then someone that's, goes, no, that's I'd probably the norm, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, it's all safe in the lesbian community. Rah, rah, we rah, don't rah, get sex because we, we don't fine. actually have sex. <laughs> yeah, all this kind of thing. And then when you have someone say, no, I really want to get tested because it's really important. Mm. And I'm like, hey, yeah, it someone actually big. values themselves. Yeah. So yeah. I really respect it. Yeah, I think that's great. And um, I guess I should talk to the health professionals about this, but there must be definite lesbian diseases that oh, only lesbians are. get, that lesbians spread, that we know nothing about. Well, I don't think it's a different disease or illness. It's just that we have the same bugs as anyone else, and we can spread them around the same as anyone else. So it is a bit of a myth that lesbian sex equals safe sex. It's mm. not, not true at all. Mm. And it's great if people are saying, no, I really want to get people checked out before we have sex and make sure we're both okay, mm. treat something if it's there. I mean, even the humble thrush, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good old thrush, you know, that's, that's a lesbian STD. Yeah. And so I guess thinking about safe sex, um, condoms for sex toys yeah. and yeah. Or change, dams and change condoms or take the condom off before you put it into the other person's whatever it is. Mm. Um, you know. And change between would you, orifices. Yeah, yes, between that's orifices. right. Yes. <laughs> would you mind telling us what a dental dam is and how to use it? Well, yeah, me being one of the two people on the panel who <laughs> <laughs> I've used one too. Oh, one. Yeah. yeah, one. Yeah, only one. It's this sort of thing, it's about that square, I guess. It's a thin piece of latex, which... That tastes really bad. You can get, <laughs> get great flavours. Wow, very yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just uh, if anyone's ever been to the dentist, and the dentist puts on the actual little... Um, braces he might be using, the little bits of equipment, and then you feel him piece, put this piece of rubber that he's put a little hole in and it goes <laughs> and puts it over your tooth. That's a dental dam. Oh, yeah, but you right. don't use it like that. Just in case. Basically, it's just used to, usually for oral sex or a, oral to anal contact. You put it, lay it over the, the vagina or over the anus. Mm -hmm. Um, and mouth on the other side, so it just stops any <laughs> transmission, basically. And you but can use it with the most, lube. It's not the it's most erotic thing. thing, and it's not the most pleasant. Well, you can you can make it erotic. I mean, you can use it as a, a bit of a sex toy as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 the two people can't use it over here. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, I'm sure that Bruce and I are really proficient at putting on gloves too. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of yeah, surgical right. slap. Yeah, <laughs> use a glove. Gloves are more useful than dental dams. I mean, yeah. all that a dental dam will do is stop you getting anal bugs into your mouth or vaginal thrush into your mouth, for instance. Which does which spread happens. from... And then you could use your mouth on somebody else and give them that. You know. Right. So um, thrush spreads through the mouth? Yeah, potentially. That's interesting, I never knew that. And other vaginal bugs. Mm -hmm. Herpes is sort of useful for. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody's mm -hmm. got an active herpes on the genital area, mm -hmm. um, that might help to prevent spread. Because mm -hmm. you can get a genital herpes onto your lip and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's pretty full on, isn't There's it? There's a few things, yeah, that you don't really want to catch. Do you really have common questions that women come in and ask you at the clinic? Yeah. Like, yeah. top five questions? About sex. Oh, yeah. 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 Sex. <laughs> well, firstly, where do you find dental dams or how do you use the things? Really? That, yeah, most people... And where do you find them? Like, the only place I've got them is Mardi Gras or Sleeze Ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a great little surgical supply that used to be down, <laughs> down that way and you could buy great big boxes of them. They are hard to find though, but some chemists will get them. Mm. Um, they're really Melbourne expensive. Sexual health. Yeah, they are. They're about a dollar each. Yeah, yeah. dollar, dollar fifty. Yeah. Oh, you can get them at yeah. Yeah. Vending Vending Council. Mm. So you can't yeah, I've never seen them. a damn vending machine. That'd be good. Yeah. That would be good, oh, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. And glove vending machines. But apparently so we don't even have a, a totally working lesbian venue yet, so maybe... Exactly right, exactly right. But another common question is, you know, the fisting thing, just, is it dangerous, am I going to do any damage? Is it dangerous? Well, it's not dangerous if you're, if you're careful mm. and if you're lubricated well enough, you make sure the person's ready, mm. it's not dangerous. And I've heard um, my friends talking about when you're fisting, the sort of in and out action can sometimes get a bit full on and people can get injured um, like yeah. really within it can cause some bruising yeah so you just got to be responsive to your partner's you state know, of arousal what's happening. Mm. yeah state of arousal whether she's sort of it's going a bit far you just got to mm. be watching the responses all the time mm. yeah what other questions do you have oh. <laughs> 
Over to Shelley. <laughs> um, oh, fistulas. Oh, yeah. And tearing what is between. A yeah, it's um, what we'd call an opening between one area f to another that's not meant to be there. That's probably the simplest mm. way of putting a it. Rip. A rip. A rip. A rip. Yeah. Yeah. The tear. Um, our vaginas are actually lined with cells it's very similar to the insides of our mouths. Mm -hmm. And you know how easy it is to, to damage that tissue. Yeah? Yeah. You just bite your mouth and it's torn. Yeah, um, so, what can happen with. Um, quite obviously, if you're not aware of your partner's state of arousal or it's an assault or you're using um, a foreign object that may you can't judge how much force you're using there, you can tear the tissue between the, your bowel. Mm. So let's say we've put a finger into an anus for an examination. This might be less offensive for people. <laughs> no, look, I'll be really honest. People probably have penetrated a vagina and an anus and you'd be aware that the tissue between, um, if you were to rub your fingers together is very thin. Yeah, it's, it's very easy thin. to get a tear in, in that tissue. And what can happen is faecal material, which is poo for some people, mm -hmm. um, can actually run through the little hole and come out your vagina. And that's one way a GP um, would be first likely to detect that there was a problem there. Is so that any way serious? Like um, yeah, of course, because E. coli, um, yep. you know, E. coli is healthy in the bowel, helps our um, bowel environment, and assists us with digestion, put it anywhere else. Um, and it's a problem for it. Is it curable though? Oh, of course. I mean, this is where I'll hand over to Ruth because um, in my professional capacity, I'm not meant to say these things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's possible to fix when you find it. Right. So. I've heard of people who have had it for really, like, years and it's mm. been undetected and whole yeah, like, childbirth has happened. And yeah, yeah. And then, like, years later, they'll find out that that's actually what happened. And that's mm. pretty scary to think that people don't... Doctors don't think in terms of... Mm. Things like that. And yes. I think it's also our level of awareness about totally. our bodies. About Once our again, bodies. I'll always retreat back to, yeah. I think, it, yeah. um, I, I despair the paucity of information of, available to the general population. Um, I also appeal to heterosexual mothers and fathers who have children who are gay. For God's sake, we do need to talk about this on air, whether it's palatable or not. Yeah, um, that's exactly right. And that these are the bodies we all walk around in for the rest of our lives. So. And I think one of the biggest health is issues for lesbians is the fact that we don't know what our bodies do and how they work and how to prevent things and how to encourage things and um, that's where I guess education comes in really mm. is really important within mm. schools and within universities and within professional realms. Mm. I'd, also, <laughs> no, I'd also really like to talk about babies and lesbians and <laughs> 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 they keep trying and they're just not successful. They just keep trying, they just keep trying. <laughs> but what's your experience, Ruth, with um, reproduction and lesbians? Oh, uh, look, uh, it's definitely a baby boom. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who want to have kids. What age group would you say? Uh, a lot if of them are older, I think. You know, people who are late 20s, 30s, who are starting to get settled, been in their relationship for mm. a while, or single lesbians who are starting to get interested. Mm. Because I was thinking about that before and I actually don't know anyone personally who is doing that but that's probably a yeah. reflection on my age and the age group of my friends. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting because I had no idea there was a little baby boom happening. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there is. Does anyone else know lesbians with babies? Yeah, I know. <laughs> a few. Yeah. yeah. But is that yeah. like lesbian, lesbian with baby or lesbian had ah, a and baby? And yeah. I know two, I know um, two, one's a couple and they got a, a boy mm -hmm. and they you know she, she had to have sex with the boy and the other one um, was a single dark who just wanted to have it on her own and um, slept with a gay boy mm. also and mm. had kids that same way. So they both had to sleep with men yeah, to get a yeah. kid? You don't actually have Well you don't have to. No, yeah. no you don't anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> how, so, how, so how do you How do you leave? Okay. Put me in my car. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's it. I'd like to know though like how do lesbians make a baby? Well they either find a donor who's happy and they negotiate you know how much contact he wants with the kid and you know make sure that he's safe as well get his testing done mm -hmm. and then yeah he does it into a jar and then you draw it up into a syringe and you inject it. Yeah I've heard that the old turkey baster is a big myth it doesn't oh, yeah, work. It out syringes. Out syringes, <laughs> syringes are much better in case anyone's watching who yeah. wants to know about this sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's simple it's the simplest thing you could do you just Boom. So what yeah, if you it. don't want to know who the father is or you don't want an, a man who yeah. to do that? Well, there's two ways. I mean, lesbians used to, you know, in the 60s, 70s, used to have an intermediary, so somebody who could find right. the guy for you and then transport the sperm. <laughs> That's. I don't think it's done that much now, but 
it's also a bit dangerous because you can't negotiate directly no. with the guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you so can't you, ask spe- specific questions yeah. and talk about specific things. And a lot of guys want to have contact with the child now, so they, mm. they really want to be involved. Yeah. Lots of gay men who are having babies. Well, it's yeah. far more acceptable now. Don't when yeah. it came out, I think it was, it was a big leap for the older women that I was um, seeing or associating with. didn't re- like me living in a house with men, mm. let alone... I guess know, that's the, <laughs> yeah, it is. the whole sort of stuff. stuff. Maybe yeah. that's the whole change in the way feminism is influencing lesbianism, mm-hmm. or is it? <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> lesbianism but is we're influencing we're feminism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. But we've got to go to another short break, and when we get back, maybe we'll talk about interesting things like what happens if your baby is straight, and what you do about that, and <laughs> all that kind of thing. But this is Bent TV, and this is on Channel 31, and we're blah, blah, blahing away. talking about lesbian health, such a thing. And I'd like to start the last segment talking to Sally about, um, I guess for all of us, knowing about our own workings of our own bodies is hard enough when we were born into them and growing up in them. But what about um, your experiences of having a vagina that is, is constructed and are you taught how to use it or how do you learn? and? What, what are your experiences? Well, to launch straight into it, put you on the spot well, a bit. Well, to launch straight into it, I mean, there's, there's so many things you could answer that. I mean, let's start by saying male to female transgenders are just as susceptible to breast cancer as genetic females, mm. but does anyone stop and think to tell you how to self-examine your mm. breasts and what sort of tests to do true, and, and yeah. where to go? Mm. And they're also, in terms of a vagina, is it as lubricating as a, as a natural vagina? Often there are a lot of problems. Mm. And in terms of the fact that it, it is constructed, it mm. can be different and it can be it can be, have less depth than mm. a, na- a natural um, genetic mm. or female vagina. So there's mm. all these sorts of issues. Mm. And I mean, going back to the self-esteem issue, I mean, a couple of weekends ago there was a report in the Weekend Australian about how pre-operative transsexuals are the biggest earners, biggest, the most paid sex workers. Mm. I mean, I mean, it's okay if they're, those people are happy doing that, fine, but we talk about self-esteem and the worries yeah. that that must cause for, let's say, non-sex workers for, because people say, okay, you're only a freak value, we don't want a real relationship with you, yeah. we just want to bonk you. Yeah. Um, and, and health issues involved in that yeah. as well. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, sort of, so, yeah. okay, the, the, the spread of disease, the, an infectious disease is one thing. The yeah. low self-esteem because, you know, people say, well, you don't fit that gender box, I'm monosexual, either mm. gay or lesbian or heterosexual, mm. so you're a freak value, but I just want to have sex with you, It's, it's um, and people are desperate, that sort of mm. thing. So there is that high risk risk of, um, you know, sort of, of sexually transmitted disease. Mm. And then, of course, there's the, the mental health issues mm. as well. So there's, there's mountains of things. Very in important as well, yeah. as sexual yeah. health. Very, very much. Mm. And another one, which may seem interesting, which would be Ruth and Shelley's thought to be interesting, if someone who, for all intents and purposes, walked into your surgery and said, I'm female, but said, I need to talk to you about prostate cancer for myself because the prostate is not fully removed in surgery, and of course nothing changes if you're not having surgery, mm. it'd be like, how would your average GP deal with that mm. uh, out in the suburbs or out in the country? <coughs> I mean, you know, they we're wouldn't, talk- I don't think. <laughs> That's right. That's sort of go- <laughs> the, uh, well, the psychiatrist threw him his next yeah, door. Do you exactly, want to talk about them because right. you're a lunatic? Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's pretty much the attitude yeah. you'd get. Mm. And there have been sadly too many stories of transgender women getting that sort of treatment. One transgender person went into hospital for well, not, not nothing to do with being transgender, 
but they asked, well, have you been to this hospital before? And that was when the person was a male. She got put in a male ward. Oh, my God. So, I mean, this is the so sort ignorant, of... So ignorant, surrounded absolute, by such ignorance. Absolute ignorance yeah. and the sort of discrimination. Yeah. So certainly yeah. lesbians yeah. get it, transgender lesbians, tra all transgender women very much how, in the same basket. How mm. many um, transgender people do you think are lesbians? I think it's an even spread. So say, I'd say roughly 25%. Some would identify as transgender lesbians, male to female um, attracted to women, mm -hmm. so 25% straight, 25% probably bi in some balance, mm. but 25% are also a asexual, mm. the whole experience of what they go through can just be so mm. um, debilitating in a way that they just get turned off from relationships. So that in a sense is a health issue, the fact that they won't have be love and be loved as mm. anyone can have in a relationship is a loss in itself. Mm. So there's a lot of issues that transgender people face that Although there's some good research, say, from the Netherlands, which mm. does good work, there's also a lot of stuff that just is totally unexplored and needs mm. to be looked at and tried to mm. get on top of it. A bit like lesbian health in general, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, I'd like to ask everyone, hypothetical, what would you do if your kid was straight? <gasps> Lish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have I got a kid? <laughs> <laughs> hypothetical. Uh, <laughs> please. Okay, recently I was thinking... Um, the other day, I, I thought, what if I'd had a child, let's say I'd had a son, I think he would have been butcher than butch, but he would have had all his <laughs> camp uncles. So, I mean, I don't know anything, or, or with a girl, it's funny, I said to someone the other day, you know, uh, when people are frightened about you talking to pe young people in schools or services, you know, the fact that you could be promoting lesbianism or being a poofter or bi or a transsexual or what, and I said, really, look, I just deal with sexuality as it is. Um, I wouldn't want to impose my expectation mm. of their sexuality. It's something that'll merge. I think I was pretty lucky that I was born sort of almost knowing that I was a dyke, so I, I didn't have to quite suffer the same sort of career path in to developing an identity. So, yeah, and, but then I wouldn't wish on anyone to be a marginalised anybody. Mm. So, you know, right. it's yeah. a hard one. There's mm. my wordy response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I reckon that the kid thing is hard because you'd be hoping to have a a gay or lesbian kid because yeah. you know about it and you're going to support yeah. them through it. But yeah. even more so to have a straight kid who would understand gay or lesbian issues more than most is yeah. fantastic. So yeah, exactly. It would be almost like they, the they'd have to come out to you as being straight almost, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'd yeah. hope they become the Minister for Health. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. Yeah. What about you guys? Oh, oh. Oh, be good because oh, oh. I don't have grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, hopefully we'd get no. to the point where... They could have kids as well. Yeah. Uh, look, I wouldn't give a okay. fluff uh, yeah. <laughs> about gay, straight, whatever. Be yeah. the most informed little being on the planet. Yeah. You know, they're a gift anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, why well, this this focus on yeah. sex is a shame we have to actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly it's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that well, that's very true. I mean, in a way, parenting's the most basic form of leadership that there is, and mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. is about helping someone else be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, give them love, give them time. But Support. Um, as our illustrious, illustrious alleged leader didn't say, don't say you'd be disappointed if they don't turn yeah, out the exactly. way you want to be, rather because they're mm -hmm. different. Yeah. And if That's you give exact. them unconditional love and give them time regardless, then mm -hmm. they'll, they will be the best they can be. Exactly in whatever they right. Are. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was lucky in that regard. My parents are very supportive of myself. And, you know, of course... It's, it's that quite initial, rare, I think. Sh yeah, but, you know, they can't make you grow up with values and put them on you and then not carry them out. So mm. they're like, oh yeah, they've got that sort of transitional gay or whatever. Mm. But they go, hey, you know, yeah, we sort of put that out there, so we've got to do it now. Yeah. Mm. And I, I, was, you know, I, was, I was lucky, I guess. On your mick, on your lead. <laughs> 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 sucking up, sucking up. <laughs> <laughs> Would everyone um, mind sharing with everyone else um, maybe your first experience of lesbian sex or lesbian health or awareness of lesbianism or something that you know might be pertinent to someone else who's going through that right now that you know they might enjoy oh. hearing about. No, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> start. I didn't even know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, oh, look, no, I didn't even know what to do. I just sort of went. Oh. Yeah, I know quite but a few. You, like that was just before because I was freaking out about it, going, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. But did they know I that just, was the first time? Oh yeah, like because I was really young. Yeah. And, um, she was a lot older. Yeah. Um, 
But then, like, just doing it was just, you know, it's like, well, You just get into it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't just do anything. It feels good. It's <laughs> consensual. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I had it. I came out pretty late, so I'm working in my clinic, right? And I'm thinking, I think I'm lesbian. <laughs> it took me a while. And then I get this patient come in, who I'd never seen before, and she said, she sat there and she goes, I think I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go, oh, that's not. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I can remember looking in the mirror the next day to see if something had changed because I was a nice Catholic girl. <laughs> <laughs> as a virgin, I was somebody's, a, a girlie's 30th birthday present, as it turned out. Um, it, I took to it like a duck to water and was accused. Oh, look, I, once I, de- I declared, I've never done this. And she said, oh, that's OK. A lot of women have never slept with another woman. I said, no, I've never done, done this. this. Yeah. And wow. she froze. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, I, and I wore layers upon layers of clothes that I had to be enticed out of um. and kept finding things to divert to do. I had a shower for about two hours. <laughs> and she sat patiently outside the door knocking, yeah. um, all that kind of stuff. I think the thing that was disconcerting for me was the next day when a whole group of women started to crack jokes about whether I could walk. Mm. And it suddenly became something really grotty and dirty and mm. kind of unpleasant. And then I think the expectation was that you were meant to be handed round the old dykes on the scene, mm. a bit like a, a fresh meat platter. So mm. that's something I would never wish for someone. But I, I didn't feel like I'd had a rotten experience. And the other day I saw that person on a doco about Queensland and mm. laughed and my current lover went, oh, she looks like an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Sweet but revenge. Yeah, it was pretty OK for me. And I, as I've said, when I came out, um, because I didn't fit the stereotype, it was my gay and male friends. And they taught me the most um, mm. about sex. They were the most supportive. Mm. Um, they even started to tell me, give me that lovely little sea liquor name <laughs> and said, are oh, you an accomplished it? And even, t- I know this is, sounds pretty gross, some of them were nurses, actually took the time to sort of give their physical rendition of what they think should go on. So mm, I, think that's, I was really, that's, really lucky, really lucky. We all need friends like that when we're coming yeah, out, I think. Yeah. What about you, Lish? <laughs> uh, are you willing to talk? Uh, I think I was pretty young and I didn't really acknowledge that it was something until I got with my first girlfriend and went, hey, that, what, ha- what happened when I was five was something <laughs> that wasn't just that this girl was picking on me that was really good. Like, yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of, I think a lot of people have trouble realising that what they did as something they didn't even recognise as something lesbian. Yeah. Like years later they'll go, oh my God, that was years ago and I did it then and I didn't even know what I was doing. Baby Dark. Anyway, I'd just like to thank you all for coming on the show. It's been heaps of fun. I've had a great time. <laughs> I hope you have, and I hope you have. And thanks for having the courage to have this topic, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, this is Bent TV, in case you've just joined us, and we're finishing blah, blah, blah. I'd just like to say um, that if you want to get in touch with us, we are PO Box 1414 Collingwood, 3066. And our phone number is 94194745. And we've got stuff for sale like caps and t-shirts. Um, and you can join us and support us, support us. You don't have to be an active volunteer or be doing anything. But your money can be very handy. Um, the, for- the form is on the website, so you can look at that. Um, there's an auction on the 18th of March. Um, at the Arrow Street Fair. So come on to that. We're just about to go. See you next week.
This program is proudly brought to you by the Peel Dance Bar, corner of Peel and Wellington Streets, Collingwood.